tight. How tight? Very, very tight. Uh, the ambulance is here. Uh, I need you to open the front door and get that necklace from around her neck off. Okay. Now, do it now. For this case, we need to go back to 2011 and also go to Sandbanks. Sandbanks, it's an area on the coast, on the Dorset coast, the south of England. And it's where all the celebrities go. It's an affluent area. It kind of reminds me uh, a little bit of Miami, slightly. But it's where the rich and famous, if they're out that night and they're in reach of Sandbanks, that's the area they go drinking in. Quick disclaimer, my name's Dawn. This is Lounge Bar Crime. Everything you hear in this video is from my own research. It's my opinion and it's for entertainment purposes only. That out of the way, let's get started. So in the year 2000, the Turner family felt like they'd struck gold. Lee Turner, his parents ran a jewellery business in the south of England. He was married to a lady from Indonesia and she was called Anita. They had one son, born in 1991, called Elliot Turner. On the passing of Lee's parents, they moved down south and took over this jewellery business and did very, very well for themselves. They soon decided that they was going to buy a house near the coast, down near the coast, down near, not far from Sandbanks. So they took that step and during this time, Elliot is signed up to go to Southampton University. However, he doesn't actually manage to get through one term of Southampton University. And the problem with Elliot is that he's spoiled, he's a spoiled brat. Anything Elliot wants, he gets. His parents haven't pushed him to do anything with his life or to achieve anything. They just give him handouts all the time. So Elliot soon got to know quite a lot of other people, other lads his own age, from also from affluent fam families. And he ran the clubs with them, the pubs, the clubs, the bars. Um, apparently they all called themselves the firm. This kind of came from uh, Elliot, Elliot Turner because he was quite immature. He used to brag that his parents gave him handouts. He felt that it was okay to talk about this. He didn't have to work. Uh, they would um, support his habits. Elliot used to act as though he was some kind of celebrity within the area. He hadn't even been around there that long, really. Um, like I said, he'd been away to university and been back and forth. Couldn't hold any kind of work down, no matter what they threw at him. He just didn't stick it out. And they were fine with it. His parents was fine with it. Elliot and his friends spent time ordering £180 bottles of Grey Goose vodka and just hanging out with the millionaires. He'd also brag quite a lot that he'd had affairs with reality TV stars and even spent time in the Priory Clinic. This is what his parents dished out money for and this is what his parents supported. On one of his nights out with the guys, he met a girl called Emily. Emily was absolutely stunning. She turned heads, no matter where she walked, she turned heads. Emily was living, well, was from New Zealand. She'd emigrated there with her parents when she was nine years old. Her parents, it, whilst over there, divorced. And not long after that, Emily started going off the rails a little bit. She was a bit before her time, Emily. She was very um, mature. Bit opposite to Elliot, really, because Elliot was quite immature, whereas Emily was was quite mature for her age, and she kind of lived a life before her time, if you like. She was going out drinking when she was like 15. She was working. She always worked as well. Again, quite opposite to Elliot. Before long in New Zealand, she started hanging out with the wrong crowd. So her parents decided that they spoke with her and they said the best thing that you could do really is to go back to the UK because her grandparents 
were were in Bournemouth and stay with your gr- grandmother. Continue with your education. Uh, she was also doing part-time modelling. So, you know, continue doing that. Continue your education, go to college, go to university. But they didn't want her carrying on with the people that she was hanging out with in New Zealand. Once Emily arrived back in the UK, she decided to do a business national diploma at Brockenhurst College in Hampshire. And she also worked part-time at Topshop in Bournemouth. Since Emily was so attractive, she got opportunity after opportunity. And before long, she was being offered modelling assignments. And she, she took these up. The thing with Emily was, Emily did jump at every opportunity that was put in front of her. And in December 2010, she met Elliot Turner. To Elliot, Emily was a trophy girlfriend. Elliot's drinking habits just continued. His parents spent £30,000 on his habit in the Priory. And he bragged about this. He, bra- he, bra- he bragged to people. But he's drinking. And you can, you can see with Elliot over those years how he changed, how he started to look. Emily couldn't see any wrong in Turner. The only thing that she just kept saying was, just stop being jealous. Please don't be so jealous. Like, I'm with you. There's no problems. I'm not doing anything wrong. And it started to be um, verbally um, abusive to her with regards to calling her names. He found that she'd done some modelling um, with some topless waiters. And it called her every whore under the sun. It, it just constantly really just it just trod all over everything she was doing it ruined a night out they went away for the weekend and he ruined that he ended up smashing up the room um i think his parents got the bill for that and when they got back from this weekend away emily finished with him and he obviously he talked around and she sent him this letter. In the letter that Elliot had, Emily had wrote, I love you. Don't say that you will kill me and stop talking about your ex-girlfriend all the time and stop being constantly aggressive. Be more cool because that is much more hot. The problem was with Elliot, he was taking more and more alcohol. He was just becoming out of control. There was no control in him. There was no reasoning with him. There was no speaking to him. Emily couldn't calm him down. Nobody could calm him down. Even his friends, they'd started to get a bit fed up with him as well. They, it, it got this nickname called All Talk Turner. I mean, <laughs> this was his mates that was calling him this. They were really, really getting so that They was moving more into Emily's corner than his. They didn't feel as though they could support him much anymore the way he was acting. And as time went on, the more he was drinking, the more he was taking drugs because he was back on it all again after the Priory. Then the worst time Emily got. Emily decides to go back to New Zealand to visit a family. She never told her family what Elliot was like. It's thought that she felt she could handle him, um, that she was ahead of the game and she'd get it all sorted out with him. Before leaving New Zealand, she cleaned all her bedroom, her old bedroom, and put everything in its place. And her mother said that she never did that. You know, it's like young girls and, and young guys. You have to tell them constantly, put that away, clean your bedroom. M- most you do anyway especially teenagers. Um, At this time, by the way, I don't think I've said that, Emily was 17, so Emily was a couple of years younger than Elliot. She cleaned all her bedroom and everything, made it absolutely perfect before she came back to the UK. On returning back to the UK, she'd arranged to meet Elliot in a club that evening. As she walks in, you can see Elliot's there and is basically chatting and dancing with other girls. 
She goes over to him and he waves her off. He just dismisses her and starts dancing with other girls. Emily just walks away. She goes back over to her friends. And at that time, Elliot makes his way over there. They have a big argument and Emily just throws a drink all over him. A friends grab her and they leave the club. After Emily walks out the club with her friends, this is how obsessive Elliot Turner was. He'd already knew how to get into her Facebook and into her phone, how to get into all her emails to see messages and everything. He had tabs on her and she walked off. And it's weird really why he did this, but he got his phone out and he logged in to her social media and he found out that there was a message there from somebody, some some guy who had said, if you're in cloud tonight, which is a club or a bar, if you're in cloud tonight, I'll, I'll see you there, buy you, buy you a drink. Now, don't forget, Emily had, had just been up to him. She wasn't going anywhere. She'd come up to him to speak to him. It was him that dismissed her, waved her off. But because she actually went, then he went delving into her, her social media, seeing this message. And then <laughs> what he does next is he goes and obtains a hammer. I'm not too sure whether he went back home to get that. But he gets this he gets his hands on this hammer he goes into this bar where finds this lad this guy and he goes up to him and he says to him stay away from emily and then he shows him the hammer after that he comes back out and he is looking for emily he finds emily and they have this massive big argument again but by this stage, Emily's gone with her friends to go and stay at one of her friends. And Elliot goes back with his friend Tom to his house. Tom's already home and Elliot turns up there. And Tom says to him, "Where you know, where's Emily? What happened? Like you do. And Elliot said, more or less told him that he'd murdered her. And it was a joke. He he thought that that was actually funny. However, Tom thought that was quite eerie. And he told Emily what he'd actually said. He'd said that he'd suffocated her. Now, the other thing is, during these weeks leading up, one of his friends did like martial arts. And he was asking his friend, how, how do you kill somebody instantly? How He kept asking him, these things i think his friend did tell him as well at one stage just not realizing that he was thinking of putting it to any kind of use at this time as things was getting worse with emily and elliot he was elliot kept saying to his friend i'm gonna I'm, you know i'm gonna i'm gonna murder her i'm gonna kill her i'm gonna kill her now i know that people say things like that to the friends like i could kill her or I could kill him in a total different tone but this Tom actually was getting pretty concerned and he was making it known he was making it known between the friends as well between the group um I'm not sure how much he enforced this on Emily but he did tell he did tell Emily by the following week Emily had had enough we're now on the 6th of May and 2011 and Emily decided that she was going to get out of his grasps and do her own thing. She went out that evening with her friends and she bumped into Elliot again. He went over to her again. She threw drinks on him and she walked away from him. She decided she was getting out of this. She'd had enough of it. Emily walks out of the bar and she goes back to her friend's house. Elliot followed her back there, but on his way, he sent that text to his mother and he said, I could, F word, break Emily's neck and break the F out of her. His mum was said to have replied, don't do anything that is inappropriate, Elliot. You're so young and have so much life ahead of you. But he wasn't listening. He followed Emily to his friend's house 
and he persuaded the friend to let him in to speak to Emily and he also persuaded Emily to accept to lift off him home. I'm absolutely amazed that his mother said don't do anything inappropriate after a, a text message like that. I could just not imagine receiving a text message from my son like that. Um, I would be ringing his phone and I would be telling him to get his ass home now. The other thing that I know I would have done, and I know I would have done this, I would have wronged the girl and I would have said, listen, he's losing his head. Will you just do me a favour and just stay clear of him tonight because I need to speak to him. I need to sort him out. None of that. She sent that message and then she went to bed. Anyway, he persuaded Emily to, that he would give her a lift home. He would get a taxi and take her home. But he then persuaded her to go to his house instead. Obviously, he's give her a load of bull on the way. So they arrive at his house at 12.45 a.m. And by 1 a.m. in the morning, Emily was dead within 15 minutes. By the following morning, there was a letter written for his mum. And the letter said, Dear mum, I cannot believe how I have acted. I cannot believe the way I acted in Cafe Shaw in front of all her friends and my friends. I embarrassed her and embarrassed myself. Mum, I am ashamed that I wore my heart on my sleeve tonight. I let my emotions get the better of me. I am not going to lie. I will tell you the truth. Me and Emily had a physical argument tonight. I grabbed her by the neck and threw Emily on the bed. That is something I have never done before. Something that I have never done before to anyone. Please forgive me. Emily's either in my in the room crying or she's gone home. Emily will never want to speak to me again. There is no point in me being here anymore. I might as well F off to Spain. Please forgive me. Love, Elliot. The thing that makes me laugh about that letter is a physical argument. You have a physical fight and you have a verbal argument. So he left that letter for his mother. And the following morning, his mother rung her husband, Lee. It was only after Lee Turner arrived home, which was 40 minutes later, that Anita Turner phoned the police. What's the address of the emergency, please? Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, my name is Mrs. Turner. Uh, my my uh, son's friend staying with us. Uh, this morning, I tried to, to wake both of them up, but the girl didn't wake up. Right, now, is she breathing? No, I don't think she is. Right, how old is she? She is um, 17. So does it look like she's got anything around her neck? Anything around her neck? Oh, oh that's necklace. She's got a neck was very tight. How tight? Very, very tight. Uh, the ambulance is here. Uh, I need you to open the front door and get that necklace from around her neck off. Oh, okay. Now, do it now. When they asked her, why didn't she call an ambulance straight away? She said she didn't think that Emily was dead. It said that when Emily's body was examined, there were signs of blood pooling in the backs of the legs, which indicated that she'd been dead for a while. There was also signs of rigor mortis. The ambulance technician said that Elliot Turner told him that when Elliot went to sleep, she was fine and he woke up to find her like that. When they spoke again in more detail, Elliot said that they had had an argument and she had physically assaulted him. He said that she was kicking and punching him and that she had his, her hands around his throat. The ambulance technician also said that Anita Turner was shaking Emily's leg and asking me to do resuscitation because she won't wake up and Elliot Turner denied murder. The police felt that there was many clues that led 
to Elliot Turner being guilty of this murder, but there wasn't anything factual that they could pin on him or the, or the parents. So they decided to bug the home the following weeks and to see if they could pick anything up. What they actually picked up was Anita and Lee talking about the murder and Lee saying that they shouldn't have got rid of evidence, which was the letter that I read earlier. And Anita was more or less saying that she glad that she that she did. It wasn't done on purpose anyway. And the next thing that year they heard was uh, Lee Turner, Elliot's father, saying, what are you talking about? He suffocated her, for God's sake. On the pillar in Elliot's bedroom, you could actually see two black marks where the eye, where Emily's eyes were and like li li lipstick mark where her mouth was. But they couldn't, they couldn't actually prove that Elliot had done it until they got this tape back and that was like an admission. And of course on that letter, Elliot was more or less saying that he's got nothing there, he might as well um, F off to Spain. I'm sorry, but if you've not done anything wrong, you don't run away, do you? You, you phone the ambulance straight away and you know, you, you, you're doing things to try and resuscitate somebody. You're not packing a bag. Apparently as well, he had a bag packed with all his stuff to take to Spain and he also had like a lot of cash in it. So he got that cash from his parents as well. You know, um, at the hearing, um, Emily's parents was, had come over from New Zealand and even then, Elliot was saying that Emily had attacked him. The judge, Mrs Justice Dobbs, told Elliot Turner to put away any thoughts of champagne, Bentleys and girls as she sentenced him for the murder of Emily Longley, 17, who he killed in his bedroom at his parents' home after doing absolute, after going absolutely nuts. He was jailed for 20 years. The judge said he did not love her. She was a trophy. The relationship, if it can be called that, was all about you. It was about control. Control you carried out using aggression and threats. Your arrogance towards Emily when on remand and during the trial has been breathtaking. Your lack of remorse is chilling. You know, um, Emily's mother also said, and father also said that when there was breaks in the trial and they were sort of like at a distance from each other, that Anita, Elliot's mother's face, was almost blaming Emily's parents for the situation that Elliot was in, as though it was their fault Elliot was going to be sent to prison. She's shown absolutely no remorse whatsoever. Meanwhile, Lee Turner, 54, and Anita Turner, 51, also faced trial. They were both sentenced to 27 months, of which they, said they served 14 months each exactly and that was through hiding evidence they were released in 2013 after serving half their sentence and have been living in the same home where miss longley was killed since anita turner an indonesian national now faces deportation after being released under british law the home secretary has a duty to deport any non-european foreign national sentenced to 12 months or more in prison. Can I just say, so far as I've been able to research, she still hasn't been deported. Um, I think that's pretty typical though with um, uh, UK. I've said it before, our sentencing and um, <laughs> the, the way we are, the, our country seems to sit on things forever with regards to crimes 
and sentences seem to be a lot lower than in the US. Whereas the US, when they give them life, they give them life. Here, say like 20 years, but I think it'll probably be out within about 16 years. So he'll still have a good, a good life after that. And they've lost their daughter. The Longleys have lost their daughter. You know, it's said as well that um, on Elliot Turner's prison wall, he's got a photo of Emily. Um, you know, I did think when I heard that, like, why don't the, you know, prison guards take that down? And But it doesn't matter, does it? Because he'll get another one and he'll have it hidden somewhere. So I suppose they see this kind of thing all the time with weirdos like that. So, and he brags apparently, I don't know who he's bragging for while he's in Nick, but he brags apparently that he gets like all this fan mail off, off women. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know why anybody would want to write to Elliot Turner. I nearly, I nearly called him something then, but I'd be thrown off YouTube forever. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. A sad, uh, a sad, a sad story, and I can't imagine um, what Emily's parents are going through, and a grandmother, a grandmother must have been absolutely devastated where they were sending. You know, they didn't know sending her back home was going to be anything like that. Because she was she was doing college, she was doing business studies, and she was doing modelling, and she was working in top shop. But apart from all this going on, you know, she had three other things going on, whereas Elliot didn't have nothing. All he did was concentrate on what Emily was doing, twenty four seven, sticking his hand out. I mean, his parents bought him a car, sticking his hand out for money, for his sniff and drink. And yeah, and it you know it also becomes apparent through reading about this case that whatever his friends thought of him earlier, that by the end they just thought he was a complete dickhead. And you can like I said, you can tell, you can see the difference in him, how he's changed, how he's changed over them few years through what he was taking. Sorry, through what he was taking and how he was living his life. You can see the difference in him for that. And his friends was, it looks like they was trying to move away from it. It looks like, they, it sounds like they were just putting up with him, really. He was a bit of a pain. I mean, they'd go off home before him and he'd be toddling from one person, following one friend home or going to find out where Emily was. You know, he, he, he couldn't just call a night a night and think, oh, right, I've made a complete tit out of myself tonight doing all that. I'm going home. He couldn't do that because he's a control freak. Anyway, he's where he deserves to be, but not for long enough. It's a shame, but that's how it is. Anyway, let me know what you think about this case. And in between and, I'm gonna say good night, take care, stay safe and come back. Bye.